What's going on guys? It's King Tuts Pro and welcome back to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you the top 10 effects all for free without any plugins. You don't have to install anything to do this, which is the best part about this tutorial. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So to start, what you wanna do is drag your videos into the timeline, which is what I've done here. So I'll have the first one here, which is gonna be our main clip. And then the next clip is going to be, well, our second clip. So this is the sequence that it's going to be. So we're gonna just gonna be doing an eye mask. It's very, very simple to do. So what you wanna do is drag the bottom clip or the next clip below the first clip. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the top clip. It's just a video. We're going to add a freeze frame. We're going to go around halfway. So this would be like if it's playing, yada, yada, yada. And then it's going to pause. And then we're going to add our freeze frame. So go to edit at freeze frame. We're going to select this clip here and make sure that this is how long we want it to be. I think that seems fine. And then I'm going to make this smaller and we can uh, delete this clip because we don't need it anymore. What you want to do from this point is we're going to add a, a mask. So drag the time head to the beginning of this clip here. Go to the effects, go to masks, go to draw mask and drag it above the freeze frame. Then what we're going to do is we're going to select the eye. So we're going to go into 200% and then just make a quick selection of her eye. It doesn't really matter what this is. It can be a person or car, a window, whatever it is. Just make a selection. Then we're going to go back to fit. We're going to invert the mask. We're then going to add our frames, but we're going to be scaling this first just so we go step by step so it's, we don't get really complicated. Click off of it. Our time head is still at the beginning, so we're going to go into the transform tool. We're going to position, add a keyframe there, add a keyframe to rotation. Um, actually, don't add a keyframe next to rotation. Just add a keyframe to position and on scale all. Then what you want to do here, maybe halfway, and then we're going to scale this up and we're going to move this down like so. Um, her eyes in the middle. So now if we go back and we push play, you're going to see it looks like that. Okay. And then it's going to play through. And then towards the end here, what I want to do, we're going to add another keyframe. So we're going to go into scale all as well as position. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go towards the end, go one frame to the left, go to transform right over here. And then we're just going to scale this all the way up. And we just want to click and drag and make sure that our eye is still centered. But we're just going to go through the whole entire, we're going to go through her eye pretty much. So you have to scale this all the way until you don't see her face or her eye or whatever it is that you're going to mask. So click on done. So now uh, once uh, we go back and push play, it's going to look like this. And then it's going to zoom right through. What we're going to do is we're going to um, start scale this. Uh, or track it to her eye. So we're gonna select the bottom clip now and then we're gonna go into the transform tool. We're gonna scale this down and then we're gonna add a keyframe right over here into the left or you can do it over here as well. We're then going to zoom through or we're gonna, we can go frame by frame and then just move this with the wherever this is moving. There we go, so it looks like this. It stops, we're gonna add it right here, right where it starts to move up again. And that's where we will add our next keyframe. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go frame by frame and just make sure that this is positioned correctly. And this is upside down, don't know why. I'm just gonna flip this. And then it starts to move down a little bit, so feel free to move it down just like that. Sweet, so now we can click off of it, click on done. And now if we go back and we push play, it's going to look like this. And wham, you got your very simple uh, but straightforward mask effect uh, or transition, I should say. Uh, but now let's move on to the next effect. So this one's really, really easy to do. All you have to do is drag your video in the timeline, make a copy, hold down option and drag below that one. So we make a copy. We're then going to select the top clip. We're going to add a mask. So we're going to the effects, go to masks, go to draw mask. Before you actually add a draw mask, we're going to clip or trim where we want the effect to start. I want it to start there and then I want it to end here. Well, actually we're gonna end it around here a couple frames before. Okay, and then we're gonna go back to the effects. We're gonna go to the masks, add the draw mask. And then what you wanna do is make the selection. So move it to the beginning and then you wanna make your selection. Sweet, so once you make your selection, you're not gonna see anything because there's an exact copy of it below. But what we're gonna do is we have the time head at the beginning. We're gonna go down to transform. We have scale, add a keyframe. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the end there and just scale this up like that. So now if we push play, looks just like that. Super simple, you can exaggerate the effect a bit. So it looks like that. 
All right, so this next one is a really simple one, and this one's going to be the lens flare transition. Uh, link is going to be in the description to the channel where you can download or yeah download the video. Of course, shout outs to the creator. Link is going to be in the description. What you want to do is uh, cut it to where you want to, uh, where you think you like the effect here. So the lens flare. So there's different kinds. I normally do the second one. So I'm going to use the blade tool to trim that using the uh, by pressing B, go to the end of where it ends, like right here, and then press B and delete the end of that. And then we're going to drag this right in between two clips. So this is one clip and this is an, a different clip entirely. So I'm going to re-enable this. So I'm going to actually uh, reverse the clip so it doesn't start with white. It actually ends with white. So we're going to go down to this right here next to this little speedometer. Click on this and go to reverse clip. So now it's going to start the uh, the other way around. Make sure that's right in, in between in the middle there. Go to blend mode, go to the screen option, and then push play. And it's gonna look like this. Looks really simple. You can also speed it up by going towards the end here and dragging it like that. So now if I push play, it's going to look like this. Super simple, you can increase it again to make it uh, go faster. And there you go. All right, so this next effect is going to be a distorted glitch effect, which looks really, really cool. So this is the standard video here, just a raw clip uh, from the music video. What you want to do is drag the video in the timeline. There's nothing applied to this, no effects at all. There's no plugins, like I said in this video. You don't need any plugins or any special software to do this. We're doing all the effects in Final Cut Pro. So what you want to do is hold on Option on the keyboard on your Mac and click downwards to make a copy. Select the top one, disable that one by pressing V temporarily. Select the bottom clip, go to the effects, go to distortion, and then you're gonna find the fisheye. Drag that below onto that bottom clip. Then you're gonna go into the fisheye. We're gonna make this smaller. We're gonna go somewhere around negative, uh, I don't know, eight. And then we're gonna increase the radius to the left so we don't see the black edges. So fill that up there. And then what you wanna do from here is we're gonna go back to the uh, blur. We're gonna go to blur and then we're going to drag the prism blur on top of that bottom clip to add that RGB glitchy effect. We can change the angle or you can go onto the on-screen controls and adjust it like that. Then what you want to do is you want to go back to the stylize option here, go to the bad TV and drag that on top of that. Then you can adjust this to however you want it to look like. I'm going to go to TV static. I'm going to adjust the amount to around 10. And then what you want to do from here is enable the top clip, go back to the effects, go down to masks. Go to the vignette mask and drag it directly on top of this clip there. Once you have done that, we're going to select the top clip. We're going to go into the size. You can also use the on-screen controls. I'm going to use the on-screen controls. I'm going to make this bigger right there by increasing the size. And then the inner circle will allow you to adjust the fall off or the feathering. So it just makes it a bit smoother of a transition. So I'm going to go around here. And then what I want to do is I'm going to select the bottom clip, press command C, select the top clip. Hold Shift Command V to paste any of the effects. We're going to uncheck the effects because we only want the fisheye effect. Click Paste. So now it looks like this. We're going to adjust that, of course. So we're going to go to the fisheye, make sure it's selected, go to the amount, and I'm going to adjust this a bit around there. So now if I push play, it looks like this. And of course, you can go back here to the bottom clip by selecting it and adjusting the settings. <laughs> All right, so this next effect is going to be more of a color grading effect more than anything. You might have seen this in a couple of my other videos, but I wanted to include it because it's one of the most popular and honestly one of the coolest looking in my opinion. So this is going to be the uh, color grading effect. I don't really have any other word to call this, but it's really easy to do. It's just a matter of changing the colors. So I'm going to delete what I've done here. So this is the raw video here. If you haven't listened to this song, I have no idea what you're doing. You have to listen to the song. It's absolutely amazing. If you're into hip hop, of course. A uh, link to all of the music videos that I've been using so far are going to be in the description. So just an FYI, uh, shout outs to all the editors, directors, producers, and uh, artists in the music videos. So anyways, to do this, it's very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to add a color adjustment. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go into the inspector window. Yours might look like this. So we're gonna go into this one right over here. And then what you wanna do from here is where it says no corrections, we're gonna click on that and go to color board uh, just because it has the masking option here. If we click on the down arrow, we're gonna go into masks. We're gonna go into add a color and we're gonna select the color. Now this takes a bit of, uh, of uh, trial and error just because you have to get the colors right. So I wanna change pretty much all the shadows except his face. So what I wanna do is I want to click 
and then just select it, but I don't want to select his face. So this is going to be the inside. So we have an inside mask and an outside mask. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the outside mask first. We're going to go into saturation and we're going to bring this all the way down. So it brings the saturation down. Now we're going to go into the inside and we're going to go back to the color adjustments and we're going to change the colors here. So this will adjust, I believe the shadows uh, and this is the midtones, and this is the highlights. Um, now we, it's only going to affect what we've sampled, which is the darker green color. So we can adjust this to wherever you want, but I'm going to change it around there. So now if I go back and I push play, it looks like this and it looks really, really cool. It's simple and straightforward. If you were to, if you want to do the opposite, all you have to do is invert this. You can go back to the eyedropper tool and select something else. So if we click back on this and we select like the white area, it will sample everything that is in that color range which is white and you can do something like that it works just fine it's just a trial and error go back and forth with the eyedropper tool sampling different color points and you can get the desired effect that you want all right so this next effect is going to be the ghosting effect and it's really easy to do all right so this is the raw plain video here as you can see really simple. What I want to do is I want to create like a ghosting echoing effect. What I want to do is I want to make a copy. So hold option and drag downwards, press command R for uh, the read timing options. We're going to go to the end and we're going to drag this outwards to around there. This will slow down the video. So just uh, letting you know, and then you're going to do another copy, hold option and drag it downwards. I think you only need three for this to work uh, or for it to look pretty good. And then we're going to press command R for the read timing option. And we're going to make this slower. So now they're going to play at different speeds. So for all the clips, you want to change them to lighten. So this one is on lighten and this one's on lighten as well in the blend mode. So now what we're going to do is we're going to mask it out. We only want to, you know, focus on Eminem and not anything else because then you will echo everything and you don't want to do that. So we're going to go to the effects. We're going to go to masks again, and then we're going to go to the sheet mask. So just drag that above that one there. And then now we're going to move and change this to the bottom one here. So we're going to move it there. Make sure that the time is at the beginning and then we're going to change this feather outwards a bit so it's a bit smoother of a of a transition i guess if you have a hard edge it's just going to look very obvious so once you're at this point you're going to go into the transforms open that up and go next to position at a keyframe and then you're just going to skim through the video and then just um, go over wherever he's moving now what we're going to do is we're going to press command c we're going to select the bottom clip or the middle clip, we're going to press shift command V to paste, and then we're going to click on paste. And then now it's going to be the same one. So now we're going to have, uh, we're going to have this going on, which looks kind of cool. But then once it ends, it kind of goes like that, which we don't want. So we're going to fade this out. So we're going to go into the transitions. So we're going to go to the dissolves. We're going to go to cross dissolve and just drag that towards the end there onto each clip and then delete the first one because we don't need it there. And then we're going to change the length. So now if I push play, it's going to fade out really smoothly. As you can see right over here, it goes away and then this one goes away. And then this one we can delete and we can pretend that the next clip here is going to start. So right here we can change the speed. I'm going to select this one and change the timing option back to uh, normal, 100%. It's going to look like this. And if you want to transition that, just go to cross dissolve and then change this. So it looks something like this. All right, so this next effect is a really cool one. This one will mimic the fisheye lens effects. What you want to do is add the video into the timeline, go into the titles and generator, go to shapes and drag that beneath the main clip that you want to add the effect to. Then trim it to the length of the effect here or the video clip. Uh, we're going to disable the top clip by pressing V. Select the bottom clip, go to the parameters here and disable the outline. And then we're going to go back to the top one, the main clip. We're going to go to the effects. We're going to go down to the masks we're gonna go to image mask drag that above that one now it's gonna ask us for a source click this down arrow select the sheet now once you've done that it's going to pretty much put everything in a circle so uh, now what you can do is go back here and disable the fill if you wanted to but I'm gonna select the top clip here and I'm gonna go into the scale you can make this smaller or bigger but you're gonna see if you make it smaller than the circle it's going to show the white and you can actually disable that by disabling it like that so now you don't see it. So you can go back to the top clip. You can make this as big as you want. So I'm going to move it there. So there, now what you want to do, effects, go to distortion, go to fisheye and drag it directly on top of that clip. We're going to move the fisheye 
above the image mask, change the amount to this, or you can go like that if you wanted to. It works best if it's not on people's faces, but I'm just gonna do this. So radius is just how far this is. So if we were to increase the amount, it's going to really round it out, but it will zoom out. And this is where you can change the radius. Um, so I'm gonna do something like this. Uh, I'm sorry, little Taka, for doing this to you, but uh, I wanna show the effect here. <laughs> So I'm gonna do something like this. I'm gonna push play, but we're gonna make a copy first. So hold option and drag upwards. And then we're going to go to the effects. We're gonna to go to the blur. So this one, we're gonna to go to prison blur and drag that there. So now you're gonna have like a RGB split effect. You can also add a focus blur if you want. So I'm gonna do that. So just so it blurs the edges. All right, so this next effect is going to be the speed ramping effect, which is really, really cool. I really like this effect. So this is the normal video here. It still looks really, really good. However, if we wanted to speed ramp this, like in the actual music video, if you wanna watch it, link in the description, it's really easy. So all you gotta do is it's going to look like this. Just drag your video in the timeline. No plugins are required. Hold down, uh, I think it's option or command R to bring up the retiming options. So press shift B and then maybe around here, shift M. Maybe here, shift M, maybe here, shift M, shift M, and last one right there. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I actually did six. Uh, now all you're gonna do is go to the ends here. You're gonna see a little line, a black line. The first one, we're going to slow down. So we're gonna click and drag to the right, and you're gonna see that you're gonna have this 55%, 80%. If you drag it to the left, it's gonna go faster. If you drag it to the right, it's gonna go slower. I'm gonna go around 55%. I think that's the sweet spot for 24 frames per second. Now what you wanna do is the next one here, we're gonna click and drag it to the left to make it faster. So the sequence is slow, fast, slow, fast, slow, fast. So we're gonna go about, I don't know, I'm gonna go 400%. And then the next one, I'm gonna drag it to the right to 55%. The next one, I'm gonna drag it to the left to about 400%. The next one, I'm gonna drag outwards, this one here, 255. The next one, I'm gonna click and drag to the left to 400. There's a certain limit to the ending since there's not a lot of time in the end, if that makes sense, or the length. But the next one, we can make it slower if you wanted to. I'm gonna leave it how it is though. So it's gonna go fast and then it's gonna go back to normal speed. Now, if I push play, it's going to look like this. It looks really, really good. Like I said, if this was filmed in 60 frames or higher, which I suggest you definitely do, this slow motion will look perfect. Since this is not the case, I'm gonna go back to the top here with the, with the speedometer. I'm gonna click that and go down to the video quality and go to optical flow. If that's not checked, it's going to look like this. It's super choppy. So if you switch it back to optical flow, Final Cut Pro 10 will do its best to kind of smooth out the frames and make it a bit better if it was actually shot at 60 frames. And that's all you gotta do with this effect. So this next effect is a really cool one and this is an easy one to do. It's just an overlay that you overlay on your video. And uh, this one is the Super 8 film, which you've probably guessed it by now. It's this one here that's very famous, of course. Uh, if I push play, this is what it would look like. All you gotta do is go to the link in the description. You can download it from the YouTube channel. Just uh, be sure to give them credit. And uh, what you want to do, of course, is right now it's set on the screen. So what you would do is you would just have your video in the timeline and then you would drag the video on top. And then you would, uh, it would look like this. So all you have to do is go to the, with the clip selected, go to blend mode and change it to either of these four. I prefer screen or lighten. I just do lighten. And then uh, now if I go back and I push play, uh, this is what it's gonna look like. It looks amazing. If you wanna stylize it even more, select the bottom clip, go to the effects, and then you wanna do is go to the, I think it's stylize, and then you're gonna have bad TV, and you can add that, and it'll look really, really cool. You also have aged film. I'm gonna go to bad TV, and I'm gonna adjust it a little bit. So right now, this is what it looks like. This might change depending on the type of music video you have. So you can do TV static. <laughs> And last but not least, the easiest effect, in my opinion, out of all the other effects in this tutorial is going to be the zoom in, zoom out effect inspired by the one and only Kendrick Lamar, as well as Drake. 
uh, and J. Cole, I believe, in one of his music videos. And this is just going to be a simple zoom in, zoom out without any movement on the actual camera equipment, which is in this case a tripod. If I push play, it looks like this. Very simple to do. I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So what you want to do from here is right now, this is the normal video link in the description. Let's move the time head to the beginning. Go to the transform tool. Go to the top left here to add a keyframe. Go to where you want it to start. I'm going to go here. And then I'm going to go zoom in. I'm going to go into the transform tool. I'm going to scale this all the way up and I'm going to change the position of this as well, making sure she's in the middle. Okay. So it's going to go like this and then it's going to stop. And then here I'm going to add another keyframe, get rid of that and then add another keyframe there. Okay. And then we're going to zoom back up or we're going to zoom out back, I should say. So we're going to go back to 100%. We're going to go to zero and we're going to type in here zero. Sweet. So now if we go back and I push play, it's going to zoom in and it's going to zoom out like that. And you can change the duration of this. Just right click on it, go to show video animation, and then you can adjust the keyframes so you can change the speed and uh, really easily. Uh, let's say that's too slow. You can just go back, push play. Looks just like that. Zooms in and zooms out. Perfect. So that's going to be it for this video. I know it's kind of, I mean, I hope it's not long, um, but if it is, I try to do my best to fit all 10 music video effects. If you guys found this video helpful at all, please leave a like, subscribe, turn on the bell notification, and uh, comment down below what other video ideas you guys have. Later, guys.